with the Holy Spirit. We welcome Him into your lives. We ask Him to live with you, to fill you with His power. The power of the Holy Spirit is an awesome thing to behold. And, uh, I know that's what Jason prayed last week. That's what I pray every week before I come in here. To be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit's living inside us. When we accept Jesus Christ Lord and Savior, that Spirit's living inside us. But some of us, we don't ever let it fill us. We just kind of keep it shoved off in the back. Because we're scared of where it will take us and what it will lead us to do. But you get led by the Holy Spirit in your life. And the more you let the Holy Spirit lead you, the greater power you will see Jesus Christ using through you. Not that you're doing anything. It's all through the power of Christ. It's a powerful thing to see the hand of the mighty God who created the world working. And it changes lives. Open up your Bibles, if you would, to Psalm 105. Kind of interesting, there's three psalms that, uh, four psalms, actually, that'll uh, talk about the history of Israel. And there, I think it's, 70, it's either 76, 78, or 76 or 78, and it's 105, 106, and 136. And those psalms, 136 was the one we read earlier, they go through the history of Israel, thanking God. You know, the one we read this morning said his loving kindness goes on forever. And it talks about the power of God in the life of the country of Israel. And the miracles that he performed in that country and for that country. And here in Psalm 105, it's another psalm of talking about it. We're, we're not going to get clear through this psalm, but we're going to start and read what it says here in the first few verses to start out with. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Speak of him all his wonders. Glory to his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his wonders which he has done, his marvels and his judgments uttered by his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. Then he confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as a portion of your inheritance. Then there were only a few men in number, very few and strangers in it. And they wandered about from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people. He permitted no man to oppress them. And he reproved kings for their sakes. Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. And then it goes on to some of the miracles that he called on for the country of Israel. Reminding people of what God had done in their lives and in the lives of others. You know, sometimes we kind of wonder why some of the stuff is in the Old Testament. Anybody here ever wondered some of those things? You know, what was God thinking when he gave us the book of Numbers? We just wanted to see how dedicated we were to reading his Bible, to reading his Holy Word. Some of them are tough to kind of go through. I remember the first time I sat down with my wife and we made the decision we were going to read the Bible together. It was going to be part of what we did. And uh, she had grown up in a different lifestyle than I did. You know, uh, and so she came from the Midwest, I came from traveling all over the world. 
with my parents, and we came together and formed a new family. And so we wanted to read the Bible together. And a lot of people, when they're growing up, they hear the stories, some of the stories out of the Bible. And, you know, you hear about the flood, you hear about Moses, you hear uh, about Daniel in the lion's den, David and Goliath. You hear about those stories. But you don't really get a feel for how much of the Bible in the Old Testament talks about how men fall, how men fail, their sins. As you read through there, I remember my wife saying the first time we were about three-fourths of the way through Genesis, and she goes, I cannot believe how much garbage goes on in the Bible. And I said, that's why we need a Savior. You look at the Old Testament and the garbage that those people did. It's the exact same garbage we're doing today. It's called sin. It's so prevalent throughout the whole Old Testament. You realize every one of those people were sinners? And they don't hold back on calling what some of the sins were. And talking about who they were doing them. And every one of them was guilty. You know, if we look back in our lives and just looked at our sin, that would be so discouraging and so just run us down. I mean, if I, if I look back on some of the things I did, because some of my things I can't fix. You know, my dad passed away before I was a Christian. I can't go back and fix those things I did to him by turning my back on him, by turning my back on the things he taught me as a child. You know, I can't go back and fix some of the some of the things, some of the people I hung with. Some of them, some of them died. I can't go back and correct those things. And I could get really depressed if I focused on all that. You know, a few weeks ago, we were over in Philippians, and I I was preaching out of Philippians. Let me just flip back for a second. And I'm going to read, it's out of the third verse there in Philippians that I was preaching out of, and it says, But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. And we talked about this. We talked about what's behind, but we need to forget it. What we've done in our past, we need to forget it. Both what we have done good and bad. Because sometimes what happens is we focus on the bad, we get depressed. We focus on the good, we get lazy. We think, well, we've done this, we've done that, we've done that. And we'll just do that again if God opens up the doors. And we don't ever look for what God is doing. We don't think about what we have done. That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about what God has done in the lives of others. And as we look back to our life, if you look back to your life and see what God has done... And some of them are miracles. I can honestly say I have experienced miracles in my life. That there is no explanation except for God. Did it. He answered prayers. He did things that have no earthly understanding to them. You know, one, one I, I've shared it in Bible study. I don't know if I've ever shared it here from the pulpit. But believe it or not, my wife and I had the largest family in Shenandoah. I know that's scary that I'm the father of the largest family in Shenandoah, raising a bunch of little dogs out there. That's scary. Scary to me too. But you know what? We've never, both of us, had to work. Ever. Never had to have a two-family income or two-person income in our family. Now I haven't hold a, you know, I don't hold a big, large-paying job all my life. I worked at Eaton Corporation, a factory, and at the factory, I was definitely not one of the highest-paid people there. In fact, I was definitely on the lower end of the 
totem pole on what Cain was. God made it work. Don't know how. I have no answers. It does not add up mathematically. It doesn't add up mathematically to making it work. Never has, never will. I don't have explanation for it. Except for one. God. The only reason I share that is because God does it. I don't. I don't know why it works. I don't know how it works. No clue. I'm not a, I'm not a dollars and cents person. My kids can tell you that. We don't keep track of what we do. We have no idea. Neither one of us. God makes it work. Looking back, that should give you the power to trust in God. And the reason I share that with you, look back in your own lives. See where God has done something that makes no common sense to the world. You know, have you ever had, somebody had surgery? You know, when they came out of Micah's first surgery and the doctor said, we ain't got an answer to this. We have no answer as to why when we opened that leg up, we found what we found. It's against all that man knows. And he said, there's only answer I have is that's the way God did it. This was one of the leading chiropractic doctors in the world. We didn't know it at that time. We did not know who the guy was. We just knew he was an old doctor. His name was Joe Hansen. And we found out that he flew in on his own plane to do the surgeries on him. And this guy who had done surgeries all his life, I've got no answer. I don't have a human answer for it except for God. Now, that's what David is doing here on this psalm. I think it's David who wrote the psalm, I'm not sure, but whoever wrote 105, he's looking back at the miracles God did and telling the people the miracles that God did in the Old Testament. Why? So that they would trust God going forward to do what God says He's going to do. If God says He's going to do something, trust Him to do it. You know, it says He called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They afflicted his feet with fetters. He himself was laid in arms. Now think about this. He had told these people that they would inherit this land. And then he's showing them how he worked to save the Israelite nation through step after step that doesn't make any sense to man. Joseph was thrown into prison. He was sold as a slave, taken away to a place called Egypt. If that hadn't happened, the Israelite nation wouldn't have been saved from the famine. God was working all through each and every detail years before David was even around, before David was even thought of. Well thought of by man, God knew it was coming. And as we read through the Old Testament, you look at what God has done in people's lives. Look at some of the lives he's changed in the Old Testament. I mean, Paul was known to Saul. How many times have you seen somebody and think they are beyond saving? You know, I, I have visited with some people who are very antagonistic against the Word of God. I mean, very antagonistic against the Word of God. And, in fact, one of them just passed away a few weeks ago. Used to, used to just really belittle anything to do with the Word of God. And you just think, man, these people, they got no chance to be saved. I don't even want to have to deal with it. I did. I, you know, I, I see him coming and I just, ugh, just, you know, 
You don't want to have to talk to the guy. Look at Saul in the Bible. I mean, this guy was out taking the Christians, holding the coats while they stoned him, dragging him off to prison. You know, he was really the low of lows. God loved him so much. He changed his heart. And think how many people he took that gospel to. To share with the hearts of others. What Jesus had done in his life. And you see that all through the Bible. Look who these people were. Read in the Old Testament who they were. And the way God changed them. The miracles that God did in their lives. And God's doing miracles in your life. You know, think back in the third chapter of John when the, the guy that had come to Jesus in the middle of the night and he, he told him about you must be born again. And he said, how can I go back into my mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus explained to him about another birth. You must be born of water and of spirit. You must be born again. That is a miracle. Who performed it? Jesus Christ. Look at the miracles Jesus Christ performed while he was here on the earth. Why did he perform those? Because man had no answer for it. And it points people to what God can do. You know, the scripture verse in the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And a lot of us have memorized that. We know it. We've memorized it up here, but it's never gone down 12 inches to the heart. And realized I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Last Sunday, you saw that miracle. I kid you not. Jason and I are great friends. I kid you not. You might not have ever heard Jason talk. Except when he's in the pulpit. It's a miracle of God. Why is it a miracle? Because he's born again. And what he can't do in the body, he can do through the spirit. And the Holy Spirit working inside of you. The Holy Spirit working together with your spirit to do what God wants. <coughs> when is the last time you thought back about what God has done in your life and realized that God can still do things in your life rather than just getting discouraged, giving up, gotten older, stepped away from it, gotten busy, stepped away from it. God can still do those same miracles. He can solve those problems that you don't have an answer for. He can comfort you when you think there is no comfort available that will ever change you back. He can give you a peace when you think there is no peace to ever be had in your life again. He can give you love the love of the Creator. And you feel no love in the whole world. God wants to work in your life. Don't look at what you've done. Don't look back at what you've said, what your accomplishments are, your failures are. But when you look back, look back at what God has done and realize God's still doing it. Things. I mean, the God that spoke the world into being can take any problem you face and take care of it. And bring you through it. Yes. You might think there's no answers to life anymore, but every answer is in God. You still want to do miracles in your life. You still want to do work in your life. He wants your spirit to be working with his spirit.
I saw the welcome Holy Spirit. Do you walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit daily? Or do you put it on Sunday morning for an hour and then go home? There's times I've done that. You know, you go home and something happens or, you know, some issue comes up and the next thing you know, you're, you're not walking in the Spirit, you're walking in your own thinking. We each need to realize that the Holy Spirit's with us 24-7, no matter what we face, no matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing in our lives. Holy Spirit's right there with us. And we have the power of the Holy Spirit to do whatever God calls us to do. Let's bow our hands. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all you have given us, for all you have blessed us with. You can take your power and do anything that you want done. You don't do it to glorify us. You do it to glorify you. Because the more you're glorified, the more people will turn to you and realize the hope of the world, the salvation of the world, the hope of the Russians, the hope of the Ukrainians, the hope of the Americans, the hope of every individual in this world. If it is in Jesus Christ, has it in the right place. If it is in any other thing, it is misplaced. There is no hope except in Christ. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.